hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime king and today i'm going to be giving you part three of what if naruto was a prodigy with super intelligence remember to get this one to 100 like as usual share this to all of your friends on your social media platform and also guys don't forget to go ahead and check out the other what ifs of the other channels if you're new yes i indeed have four channels which I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. And if you want your what if to be done by me, go ahead and comment over on Anime Symbol and have a chance for it to be done by me, guys. Link will be down in the description and don't forget to comment and tell me if you're new so I can properly welcome you to the channel. So without further ado, what do you say we jump right into this brand new episode? Begin now, guys. the last time we left off, Naruto was working on his gloves, working on a way for him to transmute elemental chakra through them, and he had the perfect solution. The gloves were a state of the art and advanced, more advanced than anything that has ever graced this earth. His mind was an intelligence that knew no bound, and it was growing the more he grew as well. The gloves were also a substitute for someone having a strength advantage over him. They were the perfect mixer to help him in a long-winded battle as well. Not to say that he was not talented by himself. However, he was still a young boy and he was growing. So he will need to have something to face the future threats at an early age. He also went into the thought of how he had created his chakra destabilizer after reading a book that was created by the third Okage himself as Naruto was able to see it. Using special AI advancement, Naruto was able to see the chakra line from the ninjas that were guarding him. From there, his technology and his view on chakra itself skyrocketed to the levels that he did not even thought was possible. But his mind had no bounds and he kept on growing and understanding at an incredible and rapid rate. He also used AI to find out exactly where he messed up so the ninjas could have found him. This new hunter, how did he find him? As Naruto was able to see five times that he messed up when he went out on his own. And that was rather stupid of him. At the time he was exhausted from a long shift. And he had left back some evidence. However, he eventually fell asleep. However, not even his dreams kept him safe from that woman. Kushina Uzumaki, she did some horrible things to him. She was more than obsessed with him. Taking her life as his mother. Yes. As his dreams. Play those thoughts in his head over and over again. Naruto jumped out of bed. Hating those dreams. He truly despised them. He couldn't wait to put a distance between himself and that woman. The reason why he left. That is when someone was trying to break into his apartment. Naruto drive the katana right through the guy's shoulder. The others ran away. He then buried the tip of the katana through the guy's skull. Soon after, he was able to find out that Orochimaru had been the one to send them. Yes. Yes, Asanin apparently knew about him and was now after him. While that was going on, Kushina Uzumaki met up with none other than Kisame, who was a part of the famous group known as the Akaske. Kisame actually feared her as he had came to battle her in the past. And she was a dreadful, terrifying woman, vastly powerful as well. She had a job for him though, and she was not taking no as an answer. As she wanted him to find Naruto, not to harm him but just to find him. Kisame had no choice at the moment but to accept, just to put some distance between himself and this woman. However, he would do the job. She told him that if he did not, she would come after him and slaughter him. We then find Naruto running down after the thugs. 
as Naruto slaughtered each and every one of them until one was left. He then got the information that he desired and killed him as well. He now had a plan. A plan that might be really stupid. He was going to wait until Urchimar sent someone after him that was strong enough to sneak him out of Kanoha. Yes, he saw that be the right way to go about things. So with that, some time passed. At least nine teams came after him, but all of them were not strong enough and just a waste of his time. As he was rather upset, he needed someone stronger, vastly more powerful. Someone that he could successfully help him get out of Kanoha. Because these were not doing it at all. That is when Urchmar showed up. However, he was in the body of a woman. His fear of female population in general kept Naruto sedated and weak. As he could not fight the Sanin, the Sound 4 was also there as well. Naruto was easily taken out because he didn't have the strength to go up against the Sanin in that body. As he was taken down, Orochimaru then took him. AI activated itself. With that, AI fired out the boots and gloves, flying after its master. It was on its way. So yeah guys, that was basically as well. I thought you guys can switch across the place of yourself. So this way we jump right into this brand new episode. Begin now guys. We begin this episode with a sign. As Orochimaru and the group was making their way, none of them saw what was coming. There was no reflection. The humming sound was drowned out by the insects of the forest. And there was no chakra. Yes, none whatsoever. Because it did not use any. It was basically invisible. Until it was too late for them. As Naruto was being kept inside of a box prison. When his eyes suddenly snap open. As his ears picked up on the buzzing from the outside of the box. As they went through the barrier of Kanoha. Naruto's body was sealed inside. Sealed by the Sanin himself so no one else could open it. Making it impossible to be opened from the inside. He could only brace himself as the AI maneuver used Naruto Katana. It slammed right through Kitamaru's chest. As the large box fell out of his top pair of arms, all of them turned. It had stabbed right through his heart. He doubled over and fell off the tree branch that he was about to land on. They were about a hundred feet up in the air on the tall, massive trees, and the box was falling from that very tall height. That is when Ruta felt a wave of air pulse right through the box. A grin came on his face as the top corner popped open. Naruto burst out of the chest and reached up and grabbed onto a branch. As the box slammed down on the ground with tremendous force from the long drop, there was no sign of resting. As the Sanin shot down, he did not even check on Kitamaru. He could have died but Kitamaru was alive. The thing was, his heart was on the other side. An insane grin was on the feminine Urchimaru's face. Seeing that look coming down towards him, Naruto quickly fell back down in the thick foliage as they were within the border of grass country. As he fell into the tree's darkness, Orochimaru felt something whipped by her. With tremendous speed, four objects. They caught her off guard. As they fell down into the foliage of the darkness, the next moment a voice spoke up. Wind Dagger. A huge chunk of the tree was carved out. It also tore a huge section out of the Sanin's thigh as blood sprayed. Her snake-like eyes adjusted to the darkness as she landed. Into the darkness of the foliage as well. She hissed in pain as she forced herself to heal. There was a flash as a kunai slipped from her sleeve. She slashed at an incredibly blast of sharp wind. However, her hand... Her attacking hand was shredded beyond recognition by the attack. She ducked as she was almost decapitated but a large part of her hair was sliced off in the process. A heavy booming sound went off as she saw a shadow shot up into the sky. She licked her lips, very intrigued by the stunt the Namikaze had pulled. She yelled at her subordinates 
who were still trying to understand what the hell was going on around them. Get him, she yelled. The katana that was still buried in Kiyomaru ripped out of his back as he dropped down in pain and it flew off in the air. They saw the black blur dropping from the sky a distance away and the remainder of them blurred towards it as fast as they could go. With Naruto, the boots were beginning to overheat as he spoke to the AI goggles. Power down my boots. As he started to fall out of the sky, he grit his teeth as he spread his arms, as he spoke frantically. Slow down, slow down, he yelled. A quick gust of winds came from his palm as it slowed him down as he breathed a sigh of relief so he would not crash land. His feet touched down on a lower branch. However, it immediately snapped under the weight. He cursed under his breath, shit, as he jumped down and landed with a roll. He looked up as he shot forwards. Give me a path to the closest town in waterfall country, he said, as he moved. Yes, sir, AI said. The ground was lit up with light that only he could see from his goggles as the path was leading him there. With his hands flopping behind him, he took off at the fastest that he could go. Every 10 seconds, a gust came out of his tech, blasting him further even more as he moved at breakneck speeds. When he glanced up, there was a round map that he could see, and he was a tiny red dot, and the location on the map was marked with an X as he moved. There was a number of red dots coming from behind him. How much are they? said Naruto. Ten, sir. Can you identify any? Naruto asked as he moved. I've only been able to identify four of them. AI said, going into the image database, that it was able to collect while coming to Naruto. Orochimaru of the Sanins. The red dot at the far back blinked yellow, showing that that was Orochimaru before turning back to red. Kabuto Yakuji. The tailless tail beast, Kisame, and Kakashi Hatake. Shit, Naruto cursed once again. The dots were adapting to his chakra-less wind speed and they were getting closer. I can't run from all of them. I need to take care of many as I can. Water Jutsu incoming. AI quickly informed him. As Naruto flipped over the water shark, he could hear Kakashi scolding Kisame for nearly ripping into his back. As he leaped up the tree, he threw the sheet of the blade away as it whipped through the sky. Several shurikens were in his other hand, coming from his gloves as he launched them. As he used his eyes to control them, the bone user who was at the other side used his bone to deflect one of them until BOOM! The others went off, right on his sound comrades. His left finger twitched as the other shuriken went after Kakashi and Kisame. Kakashi's eyes were wide in shock, seeing a shuriken without a ceiling tag. Explode with such a force, it could take out a small house. He cursed as he leaped away from the shuriken that was coming towards him. Kisame used Samihata as it gulped down the shuriken, and black smoke came from the mouth of Samihata. It squealed in distaste because there was no chakra in the bomb for it to absorb. AI, how long before my destabilizer? Come back online, said Naruto. Two more minutes, sir, AI said. His chakra destabilizer needed 5 minutes to recharge, so AI did not melt from the extra effort. As Naruto was back on his feet as he burst into a wide chase open mile that was leading straight towards the fire country and the grass border, AI had directed Naruto through the grass country so that his pursuers might get through enough. However, these were not any normal pursuer as Naruto turned. Seen a lot of teeth in his face, he blocked it with his katana. Kisame launched his leg towards the boy's chest. However, Naruto pulled his weapon down and braced against the force. Before he used his own force to push the man and his weapon back, Kisame flipped as he landed gently. I'm guessing that it's probably too late to say this, but you're gonna have to come with me, he said, with a grin on his face. Trying to show a glorious feat of strength that he'd hoped would intimidate the child to make him surrender easily. I'd rather die. Naruto threw his sword over his shoulder as he went off. 
to only come in nowhere. Kakashi landed several feet behind Naruto as two more bombs went off, taking out two zone members. Naruto stepped back so that he had the both of them in his eyesight. He glanced up as he could see Urchimar dot. It was right at the edge of the clearing, watching all of them. Hey, cool gear kid, Kisame said as he looked at him. Along with his white button up, Naruto was wearing brown shoes that came up 3 inches and brown gloves as well that came up 2 inches and plates came from underneath the gloves and boots covering his arms and the other one covering his legs. He looked like he had metal arms and metal legs with the way that he looked. Kisame believed that this boy was closely related to Kushina so it was best not to underestimate him just because of his young looks. Where'd you get it he asked looking at Naruto. None of your business Naruto said as he lowered himself into a fighting stance. Kakashi chuckled a bit as he tried to lessen the tension that surrounded them like a thick cloud all over. He motioned for Naruto to calm down. There is no need for violence Naruto he said. We just want to return you back home safely. Your mother has been worried sick about you. Looking at the child now, he looked nothing like the child that you remember. The Naruto that he used to know was always happy, always having a big smile on his face and curious to learn. Although Kushina never let him learn from anyone except for herself. This Naruto who was currently in, the steaming scorpion fighting style of the Whirlpool country, he looked like a cornered animal that is willing to retaliate rather than getting caught. There were shadows under his eyes from a lack of sleep and his skin was a lot paler than it was. He looked so tired yet, at the same time he looked so stubborn. He looked like he was willing to take his own life, then go back home. Kakashi started to wonder if he ever really knew the boy at all. As Naruto frowned before he spoke, If you attack me Kakashi, I will kill you. Just like how he had attacked anyone that was unfortunate to find him and kill them as well. If anyone get in his way of freedom, he was going to kill them without a second thought. And yes, he would not even think or give it a second thought. Kakashi of all people knew the boy, genius. And that he was trained by the red hot Habanaru, Kushina. Naruto could do some real damage to him, but his mind could not reconcile that. Naruto would actually try to kill him. You don't mean that, he said. Naruto gripped the blade tighter. Try me, he said. His sword was damaged from Kisame's kick and he had used up half of his shurikens. But he was going to squash these future threats the moment they made a move. As the both of them disappeared. However, Naruto eyes focus as they came at him with incredible speeds, aiming on taking him down. Naruto jumped back twice as he held his hands out. Wind dagger, he said. Transparent wind knives came from his palm. And the ninjas who had no idea about the consequences of being too close, dodged what they could see. They could not see the wind attack that was right behind the daggers, following right behind it. The wind manipulation was like a drill that widened from the tip to the base. So if the tip did not get the target, the base was there and the both of them had simply dodged, not knowing what was coming. Kakashi groaned as his left arm dropped on the ground as a huge part of his side was also gouged out. Kisame's shoulder was removed along with his head. Sami had to try to come at him as Naruto sent out three more. The weapon swallowed the wind attacks though before it collapsed on the ground riding and twisting in agony. While it could absorb the chakra from the dagger, the wind attack behind it it could not, as it drilled inside of the sentient blade. When it could not go any further it simply twists and drill at its inside. This was the highest and only wind manipulation that he could use out of the gloves. It was level 5 wind manipulation, as he saved it at the highest. He told AI to do it. Yes sir, as he was able to take down an A rank and an S rank with a single attack.
Kisame was melting into a puddle of water, no doubt weakened by the wind. His sword Samehata was trying desperately to save its holder. And for Kakashi, he was on the verge of passing out from blood loss. Sir, two unidentified objects appearing. As Naruto glanced up and saw them beside the Sanin, AI was able to list down what it was able to gather. One had a fire affinity and the other one, strangely enough, was made out of nature chakra. They both had incredible control. However, the fire affinity user had massive reserves. Chakra was concentrated to the individual eyes. That meant they had a dojutsu. I don't care about them. As long as they stay out of my way, Naruto fire another wind dagger Kisame head, completely destroying it. He turned towards Kakashi, however, his body was pulled on the ground. Damn it. Do you want me to put a bug on him, sir? AI asks, referring to the small bug that Naruto had added to his gloves. He could shoot it out and it would search and find the copy ninja. Attaching itself to his body, acting like a spy. It will be a waste of a bug. I already have one in Kanoha. As Naruto saw the red dot of Kakashi running back towards the village after using that technique to get on the ground. Naruto glanced up as his eyes met with the Sanins. As a whole tremor went through his body, his phobia of women was more complicated than he thought. Give me a small shock if I look like I'm going to pass out, said Naruto. His encounter with the Sanin made him realize that he was not only scared of females, but he was terrified of powerful females, especially if they made contact with him. It would make sense why he would not faint when the woman in the brothel or his Yakuza neighbor touched him because he did not see them as a threat. Yet he still feared them. When it came to strong women like his mother, any confidence or courage that came from his gut would leave him almost instantaneously. AI answered affirmatively, understanding why its creator had made a request like that. He hated having panic attacks, and now that he was outside in the real world, he would be coming across plenty of strong women, and he did not want to panic and fall on the ground. He looked down towards the bloody creator that was once, Kisame's head, as he wondered if he should take Samihata with him. It only took two seconds for him to shake his head no. He did not trust any sentient creature that he did not create himself. Throughout his kidnapping, he has mass, his chakra, and his saint as well. However, the problem is, the powerful ninjas that was at the edge of the clearing, when he looked at the Sanin once again, admiration and interest was in the Sanin eyes. She was likely aware if she came at him at that moment, he would shred her body to pieces with his wind daggers. He raised his hand. As she started to retreat back, he watches the red dot went to scrap up what was left of the sound four and the other shinobis. Some of his shurikens had burnt the bone guy really badly. Once he realized that she had backed away, power down the wind fans on my gloves to conserve power AI, he said. He had already used a lot of wind manipulation and it was seriously overheating his inventions. An outline of Naruto's body could be seen from his goggles as the hands were flashing red as AI complied. As Naruto looked at the map once again, there wasn't much detail on it. He got the information from stories in the bar and things that he overheard so there wasn't much plane or things that he had placed down to know any indication or any rivers or whatnot. However, AI was continuously scanning the place and adding things, shrub, trees, and the small lake nearby. As AI proceeded to store the information, when he could, he will create a satellite or two that will revolve around the entire planet that would continuously feed him data so no one or thing could caught him off guard ever again. The red dots of the sound shinobis were going away from his position and heading further and further away. 30 minutes had passed by as he did not even notice. The two watchers were spying on him as Naruto turned his gaze right towards them and said, Do not follow me. As AI was providing the path for Naruto as he quietly spoke, I think I should change wind dagger to wind tunnel 
Or maybe, wind strike, he said. Why, sir? AI asked him. My wind manipulation looks nothing or act like a dagger. It's more like a drill. Then why not call it wind drill, sir? AI asked him as Naruto shook his head. That is already the name of a winjutsu. And I am not using chakra, said Naruto. He was not using a winjutsu, but he was using natural wind manipulation, something completely different. His attack was raw. It was not focused, but it was still and greatly powerful. Ah, I understand, sir, AI said. Save it as wind tunnel until I find a better name, said Naruto. Yes, sir, AI said. As he jumped from tree to tree, heavily suppressing his chakra, it could barely be felt from the choking nature energy around him. Show me my bag. A green dot appeared on the map. It was at the edge of the country. It was about a few miles north away from him. He had his possessions inside, the one that could fit, clothing, shoes, soap, toothbrush, toothpaste, towels, his projector. Well, all of them, they were folded up into five hand-sized cubes. He also had sets of exploding shurikens and exploding kunais. He even had some bombs that were flat like this. The explosion could level a small town. Yes, it was incredibly powerful. He had two tins of coffee, two cups, a plate, a pot, some spoons, and lastly, 56,020 Ryu of saved money from his former job in the brothel. Anything that he forgot or could not pack, he could buy in Waterfall on his way to North in Iron Country. The bag was altered by him so that it could move on its own if he had any problems of carrying it. One of them recently being him kidnapped. His damaged sword and sheet was currently on the bag. When he was getting low on money, he would work as a bounty hunter. That seemed to be more lucrative than working other odd jobs. He broke through the trees as Naruto refrained from screaming out in joy as he took a very, very deep breath in pure happiness. He finally made it. He had to ask, how is my pace, AI, he said. You are doing well, boss. Only an hour before you reach the next town. Are you tired? No. I've never been more energetic in my entire life, said Naruto. There was a smile on his face. Well done, boss, AI said. Thank you, AI, said Naruto. Gather what you can on the nearest town and direct me to the nearest tech store. And if they don't have one, we'll find a place to rest for the night before moving out next morning. On it, boss. Naruto was going to build before. The other nations caught on that he was gone from Kanoha. Kanoha had prevented any information that he had run away from his home from leaking for years now. However, a possible spy had gave this to Orochimaru. Possibly it was Kabuto. Information can move at lightning speed and he wanted to be armed to the teeth. When the information is finally spread through, the elemental nation, countries and village that hated Kanoha, their enemies, would no doubt try to seek him out. Just like how he had hidden from the leaf for four years, right under their nose, he would also hide away from the other countries and when he finally decided to return, he would bring hell with him. Naruto grabbed his double bag as he ran past it, making his way with quick steps towards the border, moving towards the nearest country. We start working on my gloves and boots the moment we get the right supplies. Give me a list of what we need to finish the combat boots and gloves for scheme mat 37. While you're at it, Bring out the satellite schematics and show me the things that we need to build it. How many satellites, sir? AI said, sending Naruto the information on his gloves and boots. Naruto hummed to himself. Two for now. All right, sir. Good, said Naruto. For Naruto, multitasking like this was something that he had acquired after years of practice, so it wasn't hard. The most thing that he excelled in besides engineer and schematics, it was hiding. And with that, he disappeared into the dark. Time skip. Kushina Uzumaki was walking back in front. 
as she was in front of Kakashi's hospital bed, as she was rather calm, despite the anger boiling up inside of her. Excuses, excuses, excuses. The copy ninja swallowed thickly. As her tone was getting darker and darker, he was still in pain despite all the painkillers and the successful surgery that fixed his arm back. She shook her head in disappointment after hearing his disappointed retrieval of her son. She tilted her head and glanced towards him. All you're telling me is excuses. The room was now being choked with her special brand of killer intent. Dark red ear, invisible to the naked eye. However, sensors could feel it, whipping off of her body like a shroud of mist. When inhaled, it would burn the victim from the inside out. It did not spread through the hospital, it just surrounded her body, showing nightmare images of what she really wanted to do to Kakashi because of his failure. Her purple gaze fell on him. Kakashi felt the shiver went down his spine. All you're giving me is excuses, she said. She seemed genuinely confused. Her eyes were not open. As she tried to understand it seems. What he was saying despite already knowing what he was saying. It was something that terrified the man even more. I gave you a really simple job. It was so easy. Track my son down with Kisame and bring him back safely. That was all you had to do. That was it. Nothing else. Tell me, she said with a smile on her face. Why did you return? After screwing up so badly. M m my, my arm. Who cares about your arm? What about my son? Am I the only one that see? The kind of genius that he is. She placed her hand over her heart and shake her head. Am I the only one that saw this coming? Am I truly the only one that saw this? Kakashi shaking mind tried to understand what she was saying. She knew that Naruto was not just an all own genius, but also a tech genius. Unknown to him, Kushina knew everything about Naruto reading off his engineering magazines and about machines. However, she never saw him build anything, but she knew of everything that he was reading about. Her child had went through six engineering books that was taught to advanced classes at the Snow Country. He went through them when he was just six years old. She knew that he could still hide things from her. She never taught him sealing art because she knew he would hide things. But she still knew he somehow found out a way to hide things from her. No one would simply read upon inventing technology and just leave it at be. Of course, he would apply the knowledge. Time and time again, he was able to slip by the guards. That she make watch him on a daily basis. And he was off for hours. Doing things. Things that she had no idea about. The night that he escaped she was returning back. From a mission in Wind Country. She had made sure that Minato remove. His guards from the shinobi force. And remove the benefits. From being a shinobi. But she was still not. Happy about their mistake. It was still not enough. So she lured them outside the village and slaughtered them all, making it look like a group suicide. Their deaths were ruled as a suicide. Minato suspected her of being involved for only a few short minutes, but his mind was dragged back to the office and the work that he had to do. Her hand twitched just to move and choke the life out of the copy ninja for his failure and end him right here and now. She released a breath as she took one of her hair behind her ears. I am not surprised that Kisame is dead. He can't hold a candle to my boy. But I expected more from you. Copy Ninja Kakashi. T prodigy my ass. You thought you knew him so you underestimated him. And here you lie. Out of commission. Kakashi cleared his throat. His pride. Could no longer take any more for insults. If you knew that something like this would happen. Then why? Didn't you go after him? He pushed away her killer intent as he sat upright. 
His face turned into a smile and calm like hers. Is it because you know that he would mop the floor with you? Her hand lashed out and grabbed his throat. She slammed him against the pillow. As the full weight of her killer intent leaked out, her eyes turned red with slits in them, her canines elongated. Fox whiskers appeared in her face as they were thickened by the chakra that was now boiling inside of her. Watch your tone, Hatake. I'll say this only one time. Never speak to me like that ever again. Do you understand me? I yes, I understand, he said. She leaned back, releasing his neck. As her face returned back to normal, to being Kanoha most beautiful woman, a spot that she shared with her longtime best friend, Mikato Uchiha. Good, she said. I can't go get him myself because he will be able to sense me from a mile away. Kakashi was surprised because he could barely sense her chakra. It was all killer intent. If you don't remember, I trained him myself, she said with a smile on her face. She then turned. Tasumi will come by in a few hours to ask you about any information on your disastrous failed mission. Give her what she needs. Understood? Understood, said Kakashi. With that, she left the room. Kakashi, mission wasn't a complete bus. Not only did she now knew where her special boy was heading, the tracking seal that she placed on Kakashi had picked up Naruto's chakra, a lot of it. Before he had fled, with his remove armed, she had removed the seal when she had grabbed his neck, and now that she had, she would follow his chakra to where he was, unless he was able to cloak himself and get by her level 8 seal. Tasumi would use that seal to track her boy. The problem that she had that she couldn't go herself was, he could sense her. She was only able to sneak up on him in the mansion because they always had visitors, so there was a lot of chakra in the ear that could choke any sensor. Past Hokage presence dwindled even after their passing. Kushina had teach her boy how to turn off his presence so the chakra in the ear would not overload his brain. Not to mention being part of Chia and Namikaze gave him hyper senses which include everything, smelling, hearing, even taste. Tsunade had said that his eternal activated Sharingan was a byproduct of Mikato and Minato genes merging and combining together. That was as far as she could reach on understanding everything about the boy. It was something that has never happened before and complex. The Shinobi IQ that he had taken was double that of the Nara ear and that was before they could even come anywhere close to become clan heads. It was over Shikaku's score and Shikaku's grandfather's score as well. And that was a long time ago. On that day, she couldn't be any prouder. She and her best friend started to make plans right there on celebrating Ruto advanced intelligence. Mikato had proposed that they threw a private party in a Uchiha restaurant, her treat. What they later discovered from Inuichi Yamanaka was that the seven-year-old boy, he had the mental maturity of a 17-year-old Jonin. He had advised the both of them to watch him carefully for any strange behavior from that point on. But there was no changes. He was always smiling and he spoke politely, like how she knew he would. Now when she thought back on it though, it was a mess. He was never happy, given the fact that he ran away from her. As she wondered, placing her hand under her chin as she made her way towards the Inuzaka compound, why wasn't her boy happy? Maybe she did not show him much of her love. He needed more. A smile came on her face with a determined look. When he returns, she was going to overload him with love to make sure that he was happy. With that, she made her way off. Time skip. It was 5.2 a.m. at Waterfall Country. Naruto saved his work on his supercomputer database as he pushed up his goggles as he arrived at the humble town. The place was put together and properly funded because this was the hometown of the current Waterfall Daimyo. The man had worked as a plumber before he caught the eye of the Waterfall 
princess. And they started to go out. Her parents were not pleased in the slightest. Long story short, the current daimyo managed to convince the then daimyo that he could protect his daughter. The wedding had been held in this town. Naruto nodded to the old gatekeeper. He looked really old. He had taken off his gloves because they were overheating as he rubbed his hand together. He walked toward the side of an apartment building. It was painted light blue. Street lights were still on because the place was still early as there was no one out and about. As Naruto pulled out a shirt with a swaying tree on the back, a blue shirt, placing it on he felt the warmth rush through him. It contrasted against the cold that was blowing through the area as he released a happy breath. He then pulled out the black ski mask that he took from the first group of kidnappers. He did not cover his face with it though. He didn't want anyone to think that he was harmful. As he pulled it down, his ears tucked underneath. As a bang came over his face, over his right eye. He then put on a pair of black gloves with purple palm. Before he clenched his fists, yes, he was ready. As he brought out two wireless earpieces. As he spoke, still there AI. Yes, sir. As he walked deeper into the town, he had to walk for a couple of minutes before. He came across one of his targeted shops. Shinau, Shinobi Weapon Store. As Naruto reached up to knock, a bell tinkered above his head. The attendant, who was sweeping the front section of the rather large store, turned his head as he heard the bell. He was 16 years old, thick, brown coat with black pants. His displeasure at the kid interrupting his sweeping showed on his face. You lost our something kid, he asked. No, said Naruto as he looked around. There was a lot of weapons, all over. There were several books with fighting style, different jutsus, and they were written by some veterans. There were several sealing scrolls. They were maintenance kit and medical kit as well. As Naruto picked up the repair, and maintenance kit. I would also like to buy a bingo book. The latest edition, please. He stomped around the corner as he came. As Naruto was now across from him. What's a kid like you gonna do with? A repair and maintenance kit, he said. How much would they be, said Naruto. Hey, I asked you, uh, I'm in a hurry, said Naruto. As he dropped the things on the counter between them. Either you tell me the price, or I take my business somewhere else, he said. The older teen growled at Naruto as he slapped the latest edition of the bingo book on the table and pushed it forward along with the other items. As Naruto had placed two ceiling scrolls as well. Everything added up to 1,300 Ryu. As Naruto pulled out the money and pay, thank you, he said, with a smile. He could not use ceiling right there and his duffel bag was pretty full. So he stacked up everything that he could, right between them, right in a box. As he balanced it before, he left the store. The sun was rising as he made his way to a alley. He got rid of his old repair and maintenance kits. As he placed the new ones inside, he opened the bingo book along with his goggles on his face as he flipped through it. Got them, AI said, storing all information that was in the bingo book. As Naruto had flipped through the pages, Naruto smiled. AI was adapting rather well and the processing speed had increased a lot. The D to E ranks, they were not really worth that much because they did not pose that much of a threat. The reason why they were even in there was because of their heinous act and the fact that they were still on the run. It was not because of their fighting. A to C though, they got Naruto's attention. They had monikers and some bloody reputation. A smile curved up on Naruto's lips as he saw the S rank section of the bingo book. You could say that killing the tailless steel beast, Kisame, and tearing off one of the hands of the copy ninja Kakashi gave him a lot of confidence in all of his inventions. However, he could not get overconfidence by that because he did not match them in hand to hand fighting or ninjutsu or sword play. He had removed the restriction from his gloves. And used the wind manipulation. That was the reason why it was heating up, as he had removed all the restrictions, knowing that it would be difficult to take those two on. 
and stayed there and waste more time as well. When he was 9 years old, his mother had judged his taijutsu to be low jonin level. 4 years after that now, his talents were more refined. However, he doubt that he could face a S rank with hand to hand alone and live to tell the tale. Yes, D and E were too weak for him. And maybe even B and C. They were too weak. But he was going to work through plenty of A ranks before he even think of a S rank. And that was only when he needed their bounty. As he lit a fire, burning the supplies that he did not need. He didn't need a whole lot of baggage. As he burned the bingo book as well, already having the information stored. There was many ninjas that did their own bounty hunting that reside in waterfall country. So he doubted that they would be on his case much when he brought in a ninja. However, he couldn't afford to do it that much often on a daily basis for them to, well, look into his background. Not to say that they would find much, he was just being very careful. So with that he made his way, looking to find a tech store. Time skip. The hidden rain. The meeting room was silent. No one dare said a word. The god of the hidden rain sat on his throne. His red hair hung in over his face. There was powerful eyes shining ominously. He was not pleased. Beside him there was a purple hair beauty. Her face devoid of emotions. Like every other person she was wearing a black cloak with red clothes on it. As her gaze was neutral and calm, the other members was not showing emotions as well. They were rather neutral. Itachi was stoic as ever. Daedra. Well, his face was fixed with a small smile for some reason. Hidan was rather calm. Kakazu was quiet, his gaze unflinching as he looked forward. Sasori was in his wooden puppet. The white half of Zetsu had a smile while the black half had a deep frown. Nagato was not pleased. How could he have known that the Namikaze kid was that strong? The boy was an unknown and was considered less than a threat. So Zetsu didn't bother to keep a tab on the Red Eye Uchiha. Kushina location was always in the village. That is when she was not out on a mission. So she was not under surveillance either. Who could have known that Naruto would have one shot? Kisame and Kakashi at the same time. Toby would have stepped in if he noticed anything was wrong. However, it all happened so fast. Faster than he could react. They were still in the funding. Collection phase of their plan. And the money. Kushina intended to pay Kisame would have set them off. To what they wanted to use it for. The shark man had came to Zetsu, needing his help to locate the boy. However, Zetsu was stuck as he could not find a single trace that would have led back to the half Uchiha. It ended up being Orochimaru, former member of the rogue organization that led them. Kakashi and Kisame had noticed an influx of unknown ninja within the village. In Nagato's opinion, Kisame was one of the top 5 strongest within the room. So his death was a big loss to the organization. However, there was one thing clear to him right now. That child shall be a great addition to the Akaske. He hummed before he spoke. Do we know where he is? He asked. Zetsu was a bit hesitant to answer. No, he said. Nagato was not surprised by that though. Zetsu had gathered information on the boy when Kisame was killed. The boy had stayed under the radar. For the past four years straight. And that was the only thing that he could find on the boy. He was truly a remarkable child. He created his own wind based attack that used no chakra. Which make it raw wind. And it was unrefined. Which make it packed with more power. If Toby and Zetsu had not seen it for themselves. They wouldn't have believed it. He has to be found and convinced to join the organization. Nagato's eyes turned over towards Daedra, who did not seem pleased about something. Is there a problem, Daedra? Why do we need that Namikaze shit anyway? He glared at the ground, making sure not to glare at his leader. One Kanoha ninja is more than enough. 
Here he shot a hateful look towards Itachi. The Akasuke is down one member and there are no other worthy S rank around. Naruto is the only logical choice. Tedro seem really pissed off. How could some shithead Namikaze one shot Kisame and Kakashi? Sasori did not intervene. He wanted to see how their leader was going to kill Daedra. Kisame is a goddamn S rank and that kid is a nobody he said. He made sure not to raise his voice but it did reverberate around the room. I saw it. With my own eyes Zetsu spoke up. Well you saw wrong said Daedra. Nagato will lean forward making the bomber. Shot his mount as the others were quiet as well. Sorcery, Daedra, I want the both of you to convince the boy to join us. Should he disagree, capture him and bring him back here to the land of rain. Use lethal force if you have to and retreat if you must. He focused his gaze on the puppet man and he understood. Drag Daedra back alive if he's too stubborn to retreat. As he gave a nod, he then turned his gaze towards Itachi. Support them. Okay. What's the response from the Uchiha? If you can't convince him, then hypnotize him. Three S ranks were now on his tail. Naruto has caught the attention of the god. And now they were coming after him. Put guys to be in subs right here. If you want to see next person do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification. Stay posted. Bye, I'm off now. See you guys soon. Peace, guys.